How attuned are your powers of deduction? We're tackling a tricky case today designed by IDSA fellows to put your ID knowledge to the test. Can you determine the correct diagnosis? Let's find out. So thank you guys both so much for joining me. Um, let's talk a little bit about the process of designing this case and what makes it so fun for these IDSA fellows. Sure, so I can speak about that. I am an ID fellow at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm part of the IDSA Community of Practice Training and Education Work Group. And so we put this on every ID week and uh, I just had the uh, pleasure of doing it this time because I actually had seen this case before. It was all about us getting together, talking about how best to engage the audience because uh, that's the most important thing here is to uh, kind of come up with a way that we can get everybody involved. Absolutely, and Mac, did you have anything to add to that? Um, I would add that this is very fun and <laughs> is a very, very important activity that happens um, every ID week. Well, tell us more about the case. Tell us about the premise of the case and what makes it challenging. Sure, so this is a pretty rare diagnosis to see here in the U.S. It's very common in Southeast Asia. It's uh, meliodosis. And this is um, something that people just need to have a good framework for. Uh, cavitary pneumonia. So that's how, that's the most common presentation of meliodosis. This is something that we see often. Mm -hmm. And so uh, really one of the main purposes here was to actually go through it mm -hmm. and have people kind of see how they would approach it, what they would do for diagnostics. And so that's what, uh, that's one of the main things that Mac here was able to help out. Yeah. yeah, Mac, tell us more about how this might have attendees think outside the box when it comes to trying to tackle a difficult case like this. Yeah, because we don't see this every day, but we have, we see a lot of cavitary lung disease, but uh, is, you know, we try to stimulate them to, to form the differential diagnosis list, not just fixed to one of the things that they would see on a typical day, um, and I think that's also um, teach us that the history taking, physical exam, and detailed exposure history, like where the patient traveled to, where the patient was born, what kind of exposure they have, that will help us form a very good differential diagnosis list so we do not miss the rare case if we were to see one. Right, right. And what is your goal? What, what do you hope attendees get from this workshop? Yeah, I mean, I think as Max said, this is really about having fun. And I think one of the main things to know is that not everybody knows everything. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to hear some people get stumped by these things. Mm -hmm. And so, again, the most important thing is, what do you do when you get stumped? What is the path forward? And I think that was one of the major things that, again, Mac helped with reasoning out what to do next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think the main goal, what people should take away from this is that, um, again, what do you do to go forward, to move forward? Mm -hmm. Mac, did you yeah. have anything to add to that? As an ID specialist, we always listening to the patient. We also uh, get a very good history. And the thing that I just want everybody to um, remember is that we work as a team. No one know everything. No one be able to diagnose um, the patient by themselves. We always have our colleagues to help out. We have all the colleagues all over the world that we can connect and say that, hey, we never see this case before. Well, let's think through it together. 